I'm here with Darren King. Uh, Daz is not one of the fastest Masters athlete in the country. He actually is the fastest Masters athlete in the country with his marathon time this year of 2.36.02, ranks him number one bet 50 in the UK. Uh, so we're just going to have a little chat with, with Daz and kind of find out more about how he's reached that level and, and basically what it's like being an elite Masters athlete. Um, so Daz, can you just tell us a little bit about your running? Have you always been at this level or did you come into the sport a little bit later? Uh, I ran when I was younger for Alunches, uh, and then through family commitments I stopped running probably when I was about 24 okay. and then got back into it when I was 38 and so it took a few years to start building everything back up and it took uh, probably four years before I started running like I, I ran before uh, a good pace, relaxed and stopped getting injured kind of thing, pushing too, too much too early okay. when you first get back into it but like early 40s I was running well again. What was the, did you have kind of a moment where you started to think right I can really push on here and become a one of the, the top masters athletes? Uh, I think it was just gradual uh, and I, I trained well and then it's uh, the big turning point was probably training with Gareth yeah. so training with Gareth and we were very very similar uh, athletes He's one of your teammates. He's one of my teammates yeah. and, and, and by training together we just pushed each other on and on and on and that accelerated running for me and it also really accelerated running for Gareth. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's nice to have somebody out there what you can go training with and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the key that you've got to enjoy what you're doing. If you're not just find something else that you enjoy. <laughs> what, what is it that you, you enjoy so much about the sport, about running hard and doing these big training sessions? What is it that makes you tick that, that you really like about the running? I think uh, once you've entered a marathon, I think the fear of the marathon motivates you. If, it, if it, entering a marathon doesn't motivate you to running, then <laughs> it, there's something wrong. It's uh, the fear of the training. So you go training and as you get into it, you can see the progression really coming through maybe within four weeks you can see the build up working and it motivates you even more uh, and makes you push even harder to the point where sometimes you can just push a little bit too much uh, and that's where John comes in to just hold that kind of them kind of sessions back a little bit and just tug me back a little bit and just stop me running too hard uh, but it's just the enjoyment of running getting home after a day at work, sat at a laptop or whatever you do, yeah. come home, go out, take the dog with me uh, and just go out and just enjoy me running. Okay. Switch off, it's, it's relaxing. And, and what would you say some of the biggest challenges are, the, the level you're trying to run at, the stresses, the demands that that puts on your body and everything else, what would you say some of the biggest challenges are with that? Uh, I can tell over probably the last couple of years the difference it makes for recovery where on a Sunday you go out and do a 20 mile run by Monday, Tuesday I'd feel fantastic as now it's probably more like Wednesday, Thursday before I can really kick on again so it's, it's holding everything back and running slower for your recovery runs and knowing that that's a recovery run that's a, an aerobic run and that's a long run and the speed sessions just so you can kick on as I've been at fault with some of the fault leg sessions just racing them and then it takes me four or five days to get over so nowadays it's just you've got to at least I've got to at least have two or three recovery runs sessions within the week just so I'm, I'm fit and ready and get rid of the needles uh, and things like that but generally everything's holding together at the moment fantastic best it can but I, I do do most of my sessions as John knows on trails yeah. so I rarely do any any on tarmac which I think is a massive help to to, to my age and, and my muscles and my bones and everything. And keeping them in one piece. And keeping them in one piece, yes. And, and what about the challenges of just logistically of, of training at that level versus you, you've obviously you're still working, you've, you've got family and, and commitments there. How do you manage to fit it all in, Doug? Uh, having a very, very understanding wife helps. <laughs> uh, the, the girls are grown up, yep. they do their own thing. So for me, it's if. Julie knows when she books holidays round training, when she knows if these marathons coming up. Uh, we come to Clumber quite a bit. Uh, it's lovely running round there, so I can take the dog. 
uh, it's just having somebody understanding that doesn't get upset with you. I think if you've got somebody that's going to get upset with you when you, you're going out and you're, right, I'm just out for a two hour run, or I'm going out at seven o'clock at night and I've got a 15 mile run to do, I think uh, it's a massive help. So and having somebody behind you to, that appreciates what you're doing and, and realises the enormity of it as well. Big shout out to Julie then. Big shout out to <laughs> Julie. <laughs> um, so the, the master scene is, is becoming increasingly popular. There's a lot of England opportunities and, and other representative races. What advice would you have to some of the athletes that are coming into the sport later that potentially eyeing uh, these, these types of things up? Yeah, just take your time, build up, build up steady. Uh, it's no good going out and racing every day and training hard every day where three months down the line you're going to get injured. Yeah. It, it's the consistency. If you can go a year without being injured, you're never till you're going to get fitter and stronger and, and it's all going to come together. But if, if you're training too hard and you're fatigued all the time, that'll result in pulled muscles, torn ligaments and things like that. So I'd say just nice and steady build up. Just most of your runs do it a, a relaxed pace. You don't have to be recovery runs, but just do them at a medium effort where you we can talk, yeah, uh, and that's the main thing. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so, 2017, you were first bet 45 in London. 2019, this year, first bet 50. 2.36.02 this year, very, very, very solid time. Tell us a little bit more about about how that went that day and the, the kind of the build up you had with it. Uh, the build up, we had a fantastic build up. Uh, I didn't start till later, which normally started a month earlier. So we're a bit behind, a bit fatigued when we when we got to the day, uh, and about 13, 14 miles, you know you're starting to work at that point. I went through 18 thinking, oh, I'm very tired, and then when I saw the split at 20 miles, I thought, oh, probably not going as as bad as a, as bad as you think you are, and it's just to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. It gets harder and harder, but your pace does generally old old level you might lose a few seconds a mile but it does old level it's just the the mindset and that's what you do in your long runs you, yeah. you run the, your, your last few miles in your long runs as hard as you can really just so your body knows and your mind knows what it feels like and it's already getting ready for it but the marathon is probably easier than the training <laughs> yeah. in, in, in essence it's it's just you tend to get up People like me, I get up morning of the marathon. It's like Christmas morning. I'm all giddy and excited. Ready to go. I'm ready to go because I've yeah. just done four months, five months of training. So you were, you were strong this time in the, the, the last few miles, right through to the finish. Yes. Game yeah, time when you got yeah, to 20 the last miles. few miles, I was I was really running well, and I actually passed the guy that was in first bet's place, probably 100 meters before the finish line. Okay. Coming up to the finish line, I was still strong, and that's where I caught the guy. That was the, the Irish athlete. The Irish athlete, yeah, yeah and that's that's where I passed him, probably yeah. 100 meters before the finish. Fantastic. I didn't realise, but John John let me know straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a few months on, so you you ranked number one, 2:36. You're a couple of minutes clear at the top of the rankings. What's what are your targets now? What still motivates you, Dad? So at the moment now, uh, we in training for. And, and set a good schedule together now for York, which is the Masters race. Yep. So to try and chase an England vest, and hopefully get a, knock a couple of minutes off, no, another two or three minutes off what time we've already got. Uh, coming straight off London, we had a few weeks easy, and then we put a few races in, and it seems to be falling into place where this year I've probably started off 80% fit, and we're just picking it up now. We've got eight weeks left. So we just had a tired week, so it's all just start coming back again this week, as it always does through schedules. Uh, so it's the Masters at York now, just to try and chase an England vest. Um, see how it goes. It's uh, as marathons are. You can have a good one, you can have a bad one. It's you put all your eggs in one basket, really, yeah. with a marathon, and it's not a lot you can do if it's not not going to be a good day. But we know at moment really fit at the moment so it's just holding it together for the next eight weeks making sure we don't go over the top yeah uh, and we'll be ready to go fantastic so top masters athlete in the country had a fantastic year all eyes on Yorkshire you're inspiring a lot of people Daz thank you very much for your time thank you.
Tschüss.